So I shall start the meeting. So a sure. very good, a very good afternoon to all present. I, Dr. Mayank Kumar, on the behalf of Institutions Innovation Council, Amity Institute of Biotechnology, and Amity University Mumbai, welcome our eminent speaker, Dr. Tanusri Banerjee, and all present to the event. Institutions Innovation Council is an initiative of Ministry of Education of Government of India. The aim of the council is to promote and nurture innovation and entrepreneurship at higher education institute across India. India is currently the world's sixth largest economy at $2.6 trillion. Government of India has set a target of becoming a $5 trillion economy by year 2025. Startups are going to play a huge role in achieving the goal. India is currently on the third spot in the top startup nation of the world with more than 7,000 startups. The, speakers, the speaker of today's session on design thinking and innovation is Dr. Tanusiri Banerjee. She is the brand ambassador of Innovation Ministry of Innovation Council under Ministry of Education. She is an associate professor and in charge molecular neuroscience research laboratory, Dr. D.Y. Patil Biotechnology and Bioinformatics Institute, Dr. D.Y. Patil with Dapit Pune. Dr. Banerjee did her PhD in biochemistry from JNU, New Delhi, in the area of malaria biology in the year 2012. Then she worked as teaching associate at Pune University. In the year 2013, she received prestigious DST Inspire Faculty Award and worked as Principal Investigator at Department of Biotechnology, Sabitri Bai Phule University before joining Dr. D.Y. Patil Vidyapit as an Associate Professor in year 2019. She is currently working in understanding the glucose metabolism in brain cells and malaria biology. She has several projects on her name. She has also received funding for the development of COVID-19 Diagnostic Kit. She has published more than 14 research articles and also holds a patent. As said, she is recognized as Innovation Ambassador by Ministry of Education Innovation Cell. She is a lifetime member of Indian Academy of Neurosciences and Indian Immunology Society. With this now, I would like to invite Dr. Banerjee to enlighten the audience with her talk. Yes, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Mayang, for the kind introduction. I would like to share my screen. I hope I'm allowed to. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Mayan. Yes, ma'am. For this kind of introduction. I would like to thank Amity Institute of Biotechnology, Amity University of Mumbai, for inviting me to this session. As I gathered from Dr. Mayan, that in today's orientation session, for design thinking and innovation, we have over 500 students and as well as faculty of Amity Institute presenters. Thank you all for joining me today. Now I'd like to share my presentation with you all. Let's first understand what is design thinking. Since we all have gathered here today to understand design thinking and innovation, let's first try to understand what is design thinking. Suddenly, we all know that a lot of emphasis is being given to innovation and design thinking. Innovations were happening earlier, also, right? Then why there is a sudden need for having such orientation sessions on innovation these days? You know why? Because all of us have the potential to think, to design, to innovate. We all have the capacity to contribute to problem solving. 
we have the capacity to design, we have the capacity to innovate. And all of this will aim largely at benefiting the society. So we can say that design thinking is basically transformation of an idea through systematic reasoning to find a solution to a problem that will largely affect positively a large section of the society. It's basically to find a solution to a problem which is being faced by the society at the current time. What is required? First, you will have to identify the problem. You will have to empathize with those who are actually facing the problem. Then only you will be able to come up with a solution for that. Correct? And once you start thinking, once you start empathizing about the problem, then you will definitely try to come up with ingenious ideas, try to come up with innovative solutions. So the requirement is to understand the pain point. Once we do that, then we will be able to think, able to create, and become an innovator. You know what is innovation and how it is different from invention. We all know that invention is to come up with something new, right? From our childhood, we have studied that necessity is the mother of invention. Now, innovation is the process of adding value to existing product, existing technology, service, and application more viable to enhance their applicability, enhance their usability. So that is the main difference between innovation and invention. If I may be quote that old phrase that necessity is the mother of invention, we can now say as desirability is the essence of innovation. We all have the potential to innovate. That's what we said first. Right? How many of you have heard about this? How many of you have heard about Mansukh Mantida? Very few of us may have heard of it. How many of you have dreamed about innovation? We all have some time or the other in our life have used Mitti Kapra. We used to keep water cool. Especially when I was there in the hostel, I used to have one Mitti Kapra. That used to keep the water cool. Some point of time, many of us here present may have used Mitti Kapra. Months of my philosophy also used Mitti Kapra. And before he used, he decided to use the principle behind the Tikadhara to create a low cost refrigerator. A refrigerator that can run without electricity by making it simply of clay. This liquid, right? So, this low cost refrigerator was built. Keeping in mind the problem of small entrepreneurs, vegetable sellers, food sellers, who are sitting at the roadside, they don't have access to electricity. And they need to feed the vegetables, fruits, and things there, right? So how do they do that? So he empathized, once he had the he empathized with their problem and came up with this brilliant solution of creating a low-cost refrigerator just using clay, run without clay. Now that 
It's a cool invention, right? Cool innovation. So this innovation right now is being used by many small time vendors, small entrepreneurs who are selling uh, pan shops, uh, food shops, food vendors, vegetable vendors. Okay. Now, what is the difference between we using the Mithikadhara and Manchu Bhaipada using that same Mithikadhara? We did not think of using the existing technology for an extensive whereas Manchu Bhai did. Right? How did he do that? He understood the pain point, he empathized with the problem. Okay, that's what made him think to come up with an innovative solution. All right, so the difference of using an existing invention for extensive applicability, wider applicability, is what is the requirement of the art. Now he's a successful entrepreneur. It's his own shop. This is the website of his shop. He has received many national awards. The requirement is to tap the right concept. Utilizing the existing concept to solve a major problem that is being faced by the society. How do we do that? What do we have in us? We will have to tap that. We will have to tap the creativity that is there within us. Okay? There is potential within us. We will have to tap that energy, tap that energy. And that is a big asset that we have. If we put all these assets of creativity, ingenuity, originality, and empathy all together, then we will be able to create a greater good for the larger mass. So that is what is innovation. There are such excellent examples, many such excellent examples. I have just referred to one. And if we try to see these innovations which have solved the greater problems of the site, we realize that how important it is to be positive in our attitude of problems. I'm sure many of us here have the potential to innovate. We want to do something good for the society. The little requirement that is there is to channelize our thoughts, channelize our energy. How to go about this part of innovation? For that, we are holding such orientation. Okay. So we need to first identify the problem, then come up with an ingenious idea. That will lead to development of solution, which is aimed at reaching the mass. That is reaching the society. There are so many unmet needs. The requirements are still not met. Even the simplest requirement, like breathing clean air freely, we think we are able to do that in this situation. No, right? Clean drinking water, such a simple amenity. It should be there with all of us, but it is not there. In many rural areas, children are still dying of cholera, diarrhea, typhoid. Can you imagine that? And we have so much resources. We are talking about going to Mars, we are talking about uh, having uh, artificial sun, right? So much of technological advancement is there. And People are dying because they are not getting clean air and clean water. The question that arises is, 
are we utilizing the available resources in the correct direction? There should be a problem which will gain our empathy, which should shake us from within, to make us work for finding a solution of it. Anything we will be able to be creators or innovators. Just having resources will not solve it. Resources may be there, but is not being challenged for it. So, it's important to utilize your resources in proper approach. Now, we are from India, right? So, we all have heard about this term, Jugaad. Have you heard of it? Yes, Jugaad. So, whenever we want to try to fix a problem with limited amount of resource, we say, let's do a Jugaad. Put Jugaad up there. Let's solve it out. Jugaad. Okay. Jugaad is global innovation. And it is done with a limited amount of resources. So please don't think that if we have to be innovators, we need to have huge amount of resource. No, with limited amount of resource, we can do innovation. Thing is, we have to channelize, we have to think in the correct direction. Okay. Now, let's see this image. We all would have seen this image sometimes, right? A few months back, it has been going viral in all social media. What is this? Where, what is happening over here? The teacher is teaching on the board, there are no students, but she's recording the class in her mobile, which is found somehow with a plastic chair and some torn off floors. Very elementary type of judo she has done to record her lectures. Well, because we all can connect to this very well. Right? right now, we all are dependent upon online classes. But fortunately, in cities like Pune and Mumbai, we can actually have high speed internet, take online classes, use MS Teams or, or any other platform. But think about rural areas, a little level from Mumbai, little level from Pune, you may not have high speed internet. At that point, what you do, you will have to record the classes and make it available offline to the students. So that's what she's doing. And that's a very important Jugaad technology. Okay? And earlier it came from us, like we also say Jugaad Jugaad, and now you know that even big conglomerates. They also are dependent. They also are thinking of global innovations. I'll give you one example where a big conglomerate is now leaning towards the regard to Have you heard about Danon? We all have heard about Danon, right? Danon, the heel, Danon, milkshake. All these milk products are being produced in a highly mechanized, automated fashion. And one day, a uh, higher official of Danon visited Bangladesh. Now, Bangladesh is also a country like us, not that economically sufficient. So then that higher official of Danon realized that very good quality dhati bird is being made by the Women of the village, they are making it at their home, that is lassi. Wonderful products, beautiful taste, and nothing is automated. They are not getting paid for it. They are doing it at small scale. Then I thought that why not 
tap this jigger. We can use set up a production unit which will not be automated, which will not be mechanized. The rest of the thing will be absolutely same. That is, the, the quality of product will not be right? But automation will not be there. We can hire the booking and within two years, they realized that the production unit, which was set up in Bangladesh, based on non-automated uh, unit, that is based on human labor, is one of the most profitable production units. Also effective. And that's why big conglomerates are going towards companies through the innovation. So we are talking about making these innovations. How to go about, how to start. We all are amateurs. We are trying to go into this path, but what should direct us? There are two important factors we should keep in mind. Desirability, visibility, and viability. Desirability is the requirement of the product. Identify a problem which needs a dire solution. It's something with, with, without which people cannot live at this stage. I think it's such an important problem. And that will be a good desire. Next up, feasibility. We may have created a very ingenious product. Highly desirable. But the technology which you have used or which you may need to use is still out of your reach. That is, it is not feasible at this moment. What is happening? That will definitely limit the uh, usability of your innovation. Right? So make the idea simple. Simplicity is the key. So it has to be feasible, it has to be simple. And generally, you will be able to become a successful innovator. Now, let's say that you have created the product, innovated a solution. Whether that innovation will survive the market pressure, and how long will that survive? So that is called as viability. Product needs to be viable in the market, needs to survive in the market for a long term. Okay. So, how would you do that? There are two things which you will always have to tap. One is the cost. It has to be cost efficient, always have to be competitive. Second is the quality. So, you'll have to keep on maintaining the quality of the product. We have to ensure that you are at the top level. Then only your product will be viable. Now, how to maintain these two? Obviously, you will require advancements in technology. Technological advancements, you should be well aware of. All right? And you need to use it, apply it to your innovation. So all these things put together will make your product or innovation a success. Now comes the role of contextualization. What is context? Context is the actual situation in which the problem is being faced. The same problem at different places may have different facets. Now, as I said, that the requirement of basic clean water, that is a problem. Not everybody is getting it. Why not? We here in Mumbai and Pune, we are getting it. Because we have high quality water purifiers at home. Why is this not being implemented in the rural areas? We are still very suffering from this unclean water. 
is the context because of affordability, right? The requirement is same that is clean water, but the context is different. Situations are different. Hence, the approach has to be different. We cannot just go and say that use an aquifer or use some other highway purifier. How do we afford it? So the engineers mechanisms or engineers attempts which you are trying to come up to solve these basic needs should keep in mind the social economic condition, the cultural aspects. Okay. And then come up with a solution after analyzing the resources that are available. So just coming up with a brilliant idea may not solve the problem. It may solve the problem at one situation, but may not have. This is called as contextualizing. So when you empathize with the problem, just see who is facing the problem. Where is this problem being fixed? Then you will be able to think how this problem is. Am I correct? So all these stages of Understanding the requirements, understanding the constraints. These are all related to ideation stage where we are designing the products, exploring different possibilities. Okay? And once we are exploring, we will have to take the opinion of the end user, people who would be utilizing my product or innovation. People who are in the problem, who are facing the problem. Okay, so user feedback is important for actually coming up with the solution, for refining the solution. All right, so that leads to the requirement of continuously doing more and more experiments. Okay, and how will you do that? Obviously, again. Take the help of the technology that is available. Okay. Now, we have come up with a solution. What comes next is to validate whether that solution is real, whether that solution is able to solve the problem. Just creating with the idea may not be enough, right? It has to reach the mass. It has to reach the society. Okay, so that's what is requirement at this stage. I'm sorry, just to... okay. so now we are at the stage of validation. We have come up with a concept. Now we will have to put it in a physical form. Right? So we will have to create, let's say, a model. So those we call as mockups. Mockups are the so are looking like the actual product, but they are non-functional. Okay? So let's say you would have uh, built some kind of model with the help of some cardboard or some thermocol. So that looks like the product, but it is not the actual product because it does not have the functionality in it. So for every creation, first you need to put it in the drawing board, put it in the physical form, then create a mock-up of it, okay? And then take opinion of people who would be using it. Does it look okay? Can I improve it in some fashion? Okay. What all can be added or what all can be deleted actually? Okay. All that feedback needs to be taken from the users. And then we come up with an actual functioning model. That functioning model we call as a prototype. Now please remember that between this design and a working prototype, we have a large gap. We call it the first bit for 
a product may not successfully jump from the mockup to the prototype stage if the user feedback is not sufficient or if the user feedback is adverse let's say it says that the prototype of the mockup is not good then we will have to go back to the drawing board stage okay again try to improve the mockup and then try to cross the first step so now let's say you have created a prototype and this prototype now again needs to be analyzed and then by who people do, who would be using it okay so they would try to use it because it has a functionality in it so they would try to do this product and try to find out the little bit of demerits that may be there if it has just a little bit of demerits it can be easily taken but let's say it has a major fault is not working in the real life scenario then what do you do then again you will have to go back to the drawing board and see these days we have something called as computer aided designing or cad and cad is being widely used to improve upon the prototypes we may not always have to actually go back to the drawing board stage we can do slight amount of some amount of modification in the existing prototype to build a new prototype and then take the user feedback so you see what we are doing we are analyzing the performance of the product at each step with the help of user feedback and this is an iterative step you may have to go back again and again may not be a simple straightforward uh, path okay so before you take your prototype for formation of an actual product in a small scale we call that pilot production we need to ensure that the user feedback is first okay. otherwise the prototype will not be able to cross the gap which we call as the second fit for the gap between prototype and pilot production is called as second so we have concept creation concept evaluation then concept refinement once the concept is refined then we go to the finalization okay the pilot production is done once the concept has been refined all right next step is the mass manufacture the last step when you are taking your pilot product that is initial you make 20 to 50 products not more than that and then we take it up to the large scale so you may not be having all the facilities with you right so then you would need to collaborate with some industry some small scale setup or you make an even less you begin your own startup for the manufacturing process these days there is a lot of emphasis from the government you know, Start your to begin your in startups. If you have an ingenious product, innovative product, why not go up with the pilot production? And it is being aided by the government. Okay. All these processes are iterative processes where you will have to take user feedback again and again, try to refine your concept, and try to come up with a better product which will reach the marks. It should reach the society. So now let's try to summarize what we have all understood till now. Taking an example from your own Mumbai, Professor B K Chakravarti and his team of I F Bombay started emphasizing with the problem of blood donors. i'm sure many of you present here would have donated blood right now when you go to this uh, hospital or donation camp you would realize that the blood or the vein may not be visible in the septic first day it may require more than one fix it sometimes depends upon the constitution of your body like the amount of uh, fat deposition is there 
for the complexion of the skin. So that all those factors are highly variable. So that makes it difficult for even a trained person to see if the vein in the breast is. Now you have gone to donate blood. It's a noble cause. And you are being punished by a limited number of people. This can just be good from donating blood, right? So, Professor Chakravarti and his team can empathize with this problem. Studied this problem in the UK today, went to the leaders, that is, nurses and doctors, asked them that what is required. They said that we need something which will make the veins visible. Now, veins carry deoxygenated blood, we all know that. And infrared LEDs can make these veins appear as dark black lights. Deoxygenated blood carrying veins will appear darker than the rest of the background. So that will definitely make the veins more visible. So they came up with this ingenious solution of using infrared LEDs for vein tracing. So we created mock ups initially and then we took the mock ups to the nurses. They said, no, it is very difficult to handle. These thermocol mock ups will be look okay. So let's make a slight change in the design of the thermocol. So they did that. But crossing the first prototype, they took the feedback, increased their mock ups, and then created a prototype. Then took the prototype again to the hospital. They handled the prototype. Nurses and they're happy that yes, it is usable. It can uh, actually make the veins visible, but there was one problem. What was the problem? The problem was the LED itself. So people are going there so that they can donate blood for a noble cause, and they should not be feeling the pain. And that's why they are doing the vein tracing, right? Now, these LEDs are infrared rays. Infrared is generating heat. So, for even these cases over the skin for a long time, was starting to harm the skin, starting to cause pain. So, again, they had to go back to the proper stage. So they realized that the users are not happy. Pain is still there. So they had to create excess layers of covering those LEDs so that the heat transmittance is lessened. After that, they could cross the second platform, go up to the pilot. They had 20 new models, get it to the local hospitals like KEM Hospital Mumbai, They're happy with the product, and then they moved on to the last stage that is manufacturing. So why did I give you this example? Because this one single example will, will show you the entire iterative process of the issues. Starting from coming up with a solution, when we identified problem, then making mock-ups, going back to the drawing board, then making prototypes, again going back to the mock-up stage, Using user feedback and then going to go back to the actual file production. Okay, so I hope up to this point we are clear. The last stage is the scaling up, that is the manufacturing process. And as I said, that for this, it is always advised at this stage that you start your own startups, encouraged among the youth by the government. They are given support for that. Okay. So you can always collaborate with this industry, small scale or large scale, but being an entrepreneur makes you more successful. Emphasize that you start your own startups. The idea is to reach the large scale of the Thank you so much for being with me here and thank you so much for listening to this orientation session on design thinking and 
Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for the talk. So, on the behalf of Amity Institution Innovation Council, Amity Institute of Biotechnology, and Amity University Mumbai, I would like to extend vote of thanks to the speaker, Dr. Tanushri Banerjee, for the innovative session. The session was quite informative and it must have helped the audience in a great way. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the time. Thank and you so much, Dr. Mayan. If you could please switch on your video for a little while so we can have a little talk. Yeah, just, just a minute. Just. Just let me check the lighting just to Yes, hello, yes. ma'am. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you so much. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Yeah. Okay. I hope oh. your students and faculty have gained as an innovation ambassador. It's my responsibility to make them aware of the role of innovation and what is its benefit for the not only for the individual, but also for the country. So I hope you all have uh, had a, uh, some at least some positive outcome of this talk. Yes, ma'am, certainly it will like you have given very day to day examples through a very uh, common examples. You could link the like what is like innovation in a very simpler term, how people have come out with mitty cool and very simply you have just uh, with red day to day examples. Thank you so much, sir. Thank yes, you so much for thank giving you. me Thanks the opportunity. Yeah. yeah, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, okay, bye. Bye.